The third part of this uh, effect are little smoldering bits and pieces that sort of fly out. So if I turn off the uh, the grid, you can kind of see them. Um, if I hide the other two, you'll definitely see them. So there's these little particles that are just flying off, sort of like embers or something. Um, it's just another subtle little effect that I um, that I added, and uh, it's changing color over life. So if I click on color over life and I go to the properties uh, and I expand them, I've got two key points here. Uh, the first point, uh, the in value, is referring to the time. So at time zero and at time one, I'm doing something to the color. So at time zero, the color is that orange color, that 102.5 in the RGB. Uh, at point one, uh, at value one, I'm basically um, giving us a value of RGB 000, which is essentially black. Now what this does is it basically has the effect because this is an additive material, um, what this is going to do is make the um, particle effect fade out. Another way that you can uh, achieve a fade out is by modifying the alpha over light. So I've also done that. Um, it doesn't really matter. I could get rid of the alpha over life completely and it, would, uh, it wouldn't change the look at all. But you'll notice that at time zero, I have an opacity of one. And at time one, I have an opacity of zero. And so what that does is it interpolates between time 0 and 1 and it reduces the opacity linearly from 1 to 0. I've added a small initial velocity um, with a, a little bit of randomness. So I have uh, randomness in the uh, x and y, a lot of randomness in the x and y, but just a little bit of a velocity uh, upwards. So this is a pretty simple effect. I mean, it's not complex, and it's not the greatest effect. Uh, I always say that you know the effect is determined by the materials that you use to it. So when you're when you're talking about cascade, yeah, it's good to know your way around cascade, but your effect is only going to be as good as your knowledge of the material editor is. So let's go to view particle counts and let's see. Uh, let's look at some performance concerns here. Looks like we have upwards of 35 sprites being rendered at any one time, uh, between 30 and 35. And, you know, this isn't actually a big deal. Uh, normally, that would be, you know, kind of on the high side for it, depending on the effect. But, you know, for something this small, you'd say that you know, maybe 30 is a little much. But, really, when we think about it, um, the biggest concern uh, is fill rate. And fill rate is usually only a concern when you have large particles right in front of the screen having to draw geometry and animations and all that stuff behind these large particles. So these little embers uh, and this actually this whole effect is so small that any fill rate concerns are going to be ne uh, negligible. And uh, you know we'll talk about LODs in another tutorial but using LODs we can significantly reduce uh, all of these concerns. So let's go ahead and close out Cascade. Uh, actually you know one, one quick difference here between Cascade and Material Editor is that Cascade doesn't actually require you to save anything, so everything is pretty much updated on the go. So when I close this and I save my package, uh, I'm good to go in terms of uh, saving that content. So um, after this goes ahead and takes its sweet time to save, uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this. And I'll select it uh, here. I'll close the uh, content browser, and uh, here in my level, I've I've got this little torch static mesh, and uh, right-click on the torch and add actor, add a emitter torch fire VFX, and so this emitter is being placed right right on that torch, and I'll just move it a little bit, and uh, let's see here file. Um, we can go ahead and turn off the drag grid so I can get a little bit more precision here. Okay, so this is where the effect, the torch effect, is going to be played. If I go ahead and click on uh, real time, I'll notice that there it is. Okay, so I've got this little torch effect being played. And it, yeah, it's kind of cool, but let's make it a little bit bigger. So um, I can actually scale this up right here. Maybe by a factor of three. Okay, three is good. Um, deselect it. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to select this 
and the static mesh at the same time. And I'll right click on this and I'll say create a prefab. And I'll go ahead and do my VFX package. Give it a group name of prefabs and then I'll do, I'll give this a name of uh, torch underscore P. Just my naming convention again. And I'll hit OK. And yes, I want to make this an instance. And so there you go. Now, instead of going to every um, torch that I have, you know, in, in the game here and uh, having to create, uh, you know, having to sit there and put little um, emitters on every one of them, I have this uh, prefab that I can actually just go ahead and make copies of um, by alt dragging. So again, hit G for game mode, hit escape, and uh, yeah, that's your preview. That's a cool little, quick little torch effect. It's not perfect, but it gets the job done, and hopefully you guys uh, understand the use of uh, the um, bump offset uh, node in the material editor, and uh, we'll make good use of it. Thanks for watching. Please uh, add me on uh, Twitter if you haven't already done so. And uh, feel free to email me any questions. I'm always looking for good ideas for tutorials. Sorry. Thank you.